Hello everybody, it's Storytime with Teacher Gabe. Today we're reading Snappy the Crab by Pat Calfi and illustrated by Isabella G. G? G. Snappy the Crab. Snappy the Crab was not very happy. He did not have any friend. He did not have a friend to play with. Snappy looked for a friend in the water. Snappy looked for a friend under a shell. He looked for a friend in the sand. He looked for a friend here and there. Then he saw a small shell, small shell moving. It was a small crab. It was Hermit the crab. Soon they became friends. Now Snappy is happy because he has a new friend. All right, and that was Snappy the crab. Next, we're going to be reading Portside Pirates by Oscar Seaworthy and illustrated by Debbie Harder. When I was young, I had some fun the day I went to sea. I... Hi, Michael. Thank you for joining us. We're reading Portside Pirates right now, bud. When I was young, I had some fun the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. I sailed with you to Timbuktu the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. The West Wind's force blew us off course the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. We hit a storm, our sails were torn the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. The first, the first mate roared, man overboard, the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. The storm blew out, we looked about, the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. From the front deck, we saw a wreck the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. We had no fear, we sailed up near the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. <clears throat> We found a hoard of gold on board the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. We weighed and measured all our treasure the day I went to sea. I lived on board a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, over the deep blue sea. We sang the song the whole day long, the day I went to sea. Oh, the pirate's life is full of fun, the pirate's life for me. Oh, we go this way, that way, port side starboard, the pirate's life for me. And that was Port Side Pirates. All right, let's see. Next, we have Andy and Elmer's Apple Dumpling Adventure by Andrew J. Shoup. It was a beautiful morning as Andy sat beneath his neighbor's apple tree. What should I do today, he thought. Suddenly, an apple fell from the tree and plunked him on the head. Ouch, he shouted. 
Then he picked up the apple and inspected it. I know, I'll make apple dumplings. Andy proceeded to pick several apples, as many as he could carry. And then it was off to the kitchen. He spent the rest of the morning and early afternoon in the kitchen, peeling and coring, rolling and wrapping. It was certainly a big job, but Andy absolutely loved making apple dumplings. It was evening when Andy sat down to have an apple dumpling for dinner. There are many ways to eat apple dumplings, but Andy preferred just pouring milk over the top. Mmm, these sure are good, if I say so myself. But they sure are filling. He looked over to the counter at his full day's work. There's no way I'm going to be able to eat all of these. Hmm, I have an idea. Maybe I could sell them. Andy was all excited. He hopped up, ran over to his drawing table, table, and started sketching a label. I'll call them Andy's apple dumplings. Andy was proud of his great idea. Is it the truth? A voice suddenly came out of nowhere. Andy was startled. Who's there? He looked around frantically, but there was no one around. Andy sketched a bit more. Is it the truth? Came the voice again. Again, Andy looked around, but there was no one to be seen. Then he stopped and looked at his label. Well, he thought, I suppose it's not entirely the truth. I mean, I made them, but they're not my apples. You see, they came from his neighbor, Elmer. It was his apple tree. Is it fair to all concerned? Came the voice again. Andy wasn't quite so startled this time. It's not fair to Elmer, he thought. Then Andy had an inspiration. Knock, knock, knock. There was someone at Elmer's door. Elmer opened the door to find Andy standing there, his arms full of apple dumplings. Andy and Elmer sat down at his table to enjoy a late night snack. I'm sorry, Elmer, Andy began. I should have asked for your permission before taking your apples. Oh, don't worry about it, Elmer replied. These are awfully delicious. Thank you for sharing them with me. Say, Elmer, I have an idea. Elmer was listening, slurping, slurping at the bottom of the bowl. How would you like to be my partner? You know, your apples, my baking, and we'll split the profits. Sounds terrific, terrific, sound, said Elmer, but only if you let me help and teach me how to bake too. Deal, said Andy, and they shook on it. They spent another hour or so just talking, getting to know one another better, and, lately, and later, as Andy was walking home, is it building goodwill and better friendships? The voice was back. Why, yes, it is, Andy said to himself. It is indeed. The next day, Andy and Elmer got an early start on their new venture. Elmer manned the ladder, picking the apples, while Andy gathered strays. Then they were off to the kitchen, where Andy showed Elmer step by step how to make apple dumplings. From the peeling and the coring, to the dough making, to the sugar and cinnamon mixing, to the rolling and the wrapping, and finally the baking. Elmer had no idea it was such hard work, but the aroma of apples and cinnamon was reward enough for him. It was about midnight when they put the label on the last package. Well, that should do it, said Andy. But how are we going to get all these to the market in the morning, asked Elmer. You got a point there, Elmer. Andy was puzzled. Bang, clang, chugga chugga bang. Hey, I know that sound, said Andy, and he, as he and Elmer ran outside. Sure enough, it was Becky in her old beat-up pickup truck. 
What is that heavenly smell? Becky asked as she pulled up. Oh, it's our apple dumplings, Andy replied. Elmer and I are going into business together. Well, if they taste as good as they smell, you two are going to be rich, she, she proclaimed. Say, Becky, began Elmer, could you help us haul all these apple dumplings to the market in the morning? That's a great idea, Andy chimed in. Sure, if you wouldn't mind giving me a few, she said. Suddenly, the voice returned. Is it beneficial to all concerned? Andy noticed that neither Elmer nor Becky seemed to hear the voice. We can do better than that, stated Andy. How about we cut you in on the profits? Yes, yes, agreed Elmer. Deal, said Becky, and they all shook. The next day was incredible. Not only did Andy and Elmer sell all the apple dumplings, but they had orders for many, many more. In fact, in the days to come, their venture became so prosperous that Elmer now runs an orchard. Becky oversees a fleet of trucks, and Andy has 32 bakers working for him. And to this day, Andy still isn't quite sure where that mysterious voice came from, although he now feels that it was simply the voice from inside him guiding him along his way. And if you ever visit Andy's kitchen, you'll find posted on the refrigerator those four little questions to help guide everyone along their way. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be, be beneficial to all concerned? All right, and that was Andy and Elmer's Apple Dumpling Adventure. All right, that's all the stories I have today. Thank you for joining for story time.